So jumping right back in with this turbo manifold. So in this video, I'm gonna be getting the first three cylinders to collect up into this port here. First port of call is to get number one up there. Um, at the moment, I'm thinking about doing something like this, bit of a pie cut on there, and then sending this straight to cylinder one at the top part of that circle. And then I'm gonna have number two and three sort of sweep around underneath it and merge up sort of sweep around and then merge into that straight section, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'll get to it and it'll start to make a little bit more sense as progress happens. So um, yeah, jump right into it. So I'm part way through making this merge for cylinders one and two. Um, thought I'd just show this technique here. So I've already cut this side out. That's, um, uh, what's that one? That's for cylinder two. So that's gonna merge into the straight section for cylinder one. Um, but uh, obviously it's a pretty awkward shape to cut out, so um, marked it out and then obviously cut as far up as I could with the angle grinder. Um, and then yeah, just drilled a few little holes in up the top here. Should just be able to grab the back of this with some vice grips and just sort of bend it backwards and forth until these break. Cool, just like that. So now all I'm left with to clean up is these little bits here. So that'll be nice and easy to get in with a die grinder and tidy that up. I'll get to cleaning this up and then I can tack them together. So I've got that cut line marked out. Um, it's fairly similar to the other mode that we did. Um, but yeah, just a little trick that's helping me with this, because um, I don't have any fancy measuring equipment or cutting equipment or anything, I'm basically just marking, basically finding out how much of that I'm gonna want to protrude into the current port. So like, uh, for example, you know, I want to go that deep into the, the other pipe. So then I mark, mark the line on the side. I'm basically lining it up on this crease in the bench here and then using that as a visual guide to mark the line because obviously you've got a radius going that way and then a radius going around the tube that way so it's kind of hard to visualise a straight line through those, those two radiuses. So if you've got a, you know, you could even use it if you, if you just marked out with a texture on a piece of paper a dead straight line and then you can use that as reference um, as long as you keep, you know, that's 90 degrees to the line and then you just try and follow it like if that line was to continue through the part you just that's where you mark you're following that line there so that's helping me and then then yeah you come up and over and it's pretty parallel the whole way and you just yeah, you flip it over and do the other side so that's been working fairly well for me for these trickier bend mergers um some of the other ones like this one here was harder. i couldn't really i don't know it might just be my lack of experience with this stuff but i couldn't work this out in an easy way especially because it was such a long splice into that tube so I um yeah that one there was a bit, a bit tricky I basically just had to like um I made a rough rough measurement with it but basically had to cut it and keep trimming it back until it was right but these these small ones are a little bit easier to do this way so yeah anyway that's just how I've been going about it and when it comes to cutting I've um I've just got a little mark on the inside of the tube here so I'll just kind of nick the um, nick the blade in there, or the disc, nick it on that, and then once it touches up there, you know you're square on the cut, um, and then that, then you just basically follow it on that angle. And as long as you, as long as you try and keep your cutting disc at that same angle, you should wind up going through the end of that curve fairly well where you need to. Um, then you can flip the part upside down, and then you just join the um, basically join where you nicked it down here up with the other side. Yeah, I don't know if that made sense at all, but yeah, sort of how I've been going about it and it works. So, um, so yeah, might be handy info for someone. It's been working for me, so, um, cause yeah, I don't know. When I sort of set out on doing this, I was having a hard time envisioning the, um, the notches and stuff, cause obviously without a notcher and stuff, it's a little, it's a little bit harder. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not exactly difficult per se. It's just, yeah, it's a little bit more planning rather than just sort of like, you know, once you know where your line is here, you just lop it off in a notcher or a bandsaw or something. If you're using the angle grinder and you, you kilter off that way, then the cut's going to start wandering that way. And then the same thing, if you, if you kilter off that way, it'll, it's going to start going off that way. Or you can do a combination of both, you can go that way and that way, and then you, it's just completely on the piss. 
yeah, it just takes a little bit more planning and forethought when you're doing it like this, I've, I've found anyway. Um, I know some people are probably more natural at this than I am, but I need to sort of know exactly where I'm going because guarantee if I sent this, if I sent the grinder through that freehand, it'd be all sorts of messed up. So yeah, anyway, seems to work. So I'll get to cutting that up and get on to the rest of this manifold. So there we have it, a little uh, teardrop splice sort of straight through there. It's pretty nice and straight as well. So yeah, it's a good sign that the grinder didn't wander off too much. It's a little bit on the piss down this side, but um, yeah, disc sander will sort that out. Um, so this is probably one of the trickier joins that I've had to do. So looking at this, sort of line it up there. And then yeah, if you have a look down through here, that merge down there is sort of going off on an angle. So that means that I need to I need to scallop this back section out to match this profile here. That when I um, actually merge these together, you know, the, the metal's actually fitting up nicely the whole way around there. Uh, but because it sort of tilts off on an angle, it's a little bit awkward. So, so yeah, I'll do my best to mark that out and hopefully I can get it on point and um, yeah, get to cutting the other section out and then uh, yeah, welding this leg on. Okay, this here gives you a better idea of how I need to, how I need to scallop that bit. So that needs to fit down into that groove between those two pipes there. So yeah, a bit of a radius around there. It's gonna have to dip down into that gap and then radius back up onto the outside towards the end. So yeah, quite an awkward shape. But um, yeah, I'll try my best, see how we go. So uh, yeah, a bit of freehanding there, sort of just laid it down and um, sat it on there and then got down parallel with it and then just marked it with the, the soak foam there. Um, just sort of got down on a parallel line with it all and just marked out where I think these tubes are gonna wanna intersect. And then um, actually line it up in there. You can sort of see how it's gonna, hopefully, with a bit of luck if I did it accurately. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, this is 100% freehanding it, so um, we'll see how we go. But you can see the idea there. It's gonna wrap around those two tubes and then slot down into there, hopefully nicely. Now we can see how awkward that shape is. Um, yeah, I had a hard time. It's a bit weird because your natural instinct is you just want to make everything look smooth and nice and symmetrical. <laughs> and then you come up with that and it's, it's you gotta fight all your urges to just round it off more than you want to and just have it look a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll sort of sit this on here, line him up with the edge. Get a good look down in there now. Look at that. That is pretty good, I think. Once again, we're drilling some holes in here to try and get this really awkward shape out. Um, looks janky as hell, but it's it's definitely one of those you need to trust the process steps. So you can see now I just need to go through with the die grinder and just tidy all of this up. So that fits up pretty damn well, except for uh, there's just this bit of a gap down here, but that shouldn't be too bad couple of drops of filler in there and it'll fill right up. But yeah, if I if I try and chase that out, it's just gonna upset the fitment up here. So that's nothing, a couple extra drops of, drops of filler rod can't fix. It's not the world's worst gap. Um, but I mean, for the sake of the rest of it, like this section up around here and down, in, down into that collector there, and then right the way around there, all of that's really bang on. So if I go chasing that little gap there is just going to upset the rest of it. So, um, yeah, that looks pretty damn nice. Real happy with that. See, anytime you cut through one of your own welds, it's a good chance to get a look at what was actually going on. So, um, yeah, there's nice penetration there, no porosity. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. So, um, like I did with the last one, I'm just going to run through here and um, fusion weld these two sections on the inside just for peace of mind. And, um, yeah, that'll be ready to tack up and weld together. So, um, cool. Yeah, it's really coming along now.
Yeah, so we're all tidied up now, so um, yeah, let's get stuck into welding. recently started playing around with the pulse settings on the welder. Um, yeah, it gives you these nice little profile beads. I'm trying to sort of help mitigate the heat a little bit more. So yeah, the pulse settings helps with that. Got down in there, the merge turned out nice all the way around. Um, and yeah, this other side here, pretty good as well. So yeah, I've just got to flatten up the bottom now and then that's gonna go something like that. There we go, so you can see that one's gonna go up towards number one. And they're all wrapped back around to number two, and then number three is going to zigzag sort of back into there. So yeah, it's very similar to the other collector, except for it's um, two straights and a bend instead of three bends. Um, yeah, quite a bit of fun to make. Anyway, I'll tack that up, and then yeah, we'll get started with cylinder one. So this is where we're at. Um, I've actually drilled a couple of holes in the top of the bench here and bolted the flange down. Just so while I'm tacking the rest of this up, if it wants to pull in any directions, it can't. I want the flange to be as flat as possible um, before all of these runners are sort of finalized. But yeah, as you can see, cylinder three is gonna sort of kick off, kick off over there. So I've managed to get the runner for cylinder one tacked up now. Um, unfortunately, I'm running out of materials, so this is all I've got left in the 40 mil stuff. So, so yeah, I've only got these two bends here, this little bit of straight section, and um, this little off cut here, which is actually gonna come in really handy for cylinder two. Yeah, this little guy here is gonna be a key, key component, because if you, um, it's hard to see, but if I, if I just put this guy straight on there, you can sort of see the, there we go. Yeah, you can see the angle that that's kicking off at. It's not, it's not heading towards that port at all. It's sort of heading off. It's going to land sort of halfway over here. Um, so that's where having a little sort of pie cut section like this will enable you to. That that'll enable me to change the direction of that tube. Um, and being that I can sort of rotate it around wherever I want, you can sort of see there that the angle of that face changes. So yeah, depending on where I align that pie cut, I'm able to then adjust the angle of this, this in or out. Last piece of the puzzle for cylinder two. Um, yeah, I'll chuck it in and now I get attacking it up.
So I just got it mocked up on the engine again. Um, yeah, it's starting to look real good. Pretty happy with this. Um, yeah, you can really get a you really get a good look of cylinder two sort of wrapping around the bottom there. And then um, yeah, cylinder threes just shooting off a little bit too much for my like. So now all that's left, um, yeah, to get cylinder three run. So like I was saying before, I've run out of material for the time being, so I can't um, I can't finish number three off. So I'm gonna have to get some more during the week, and then I'll um, and then I'll get that sorted out on the weekend. So yeah, sort of run out of time and, and materials for the time being. But um, yeah, I think I spoke about those pulse settings before on the welder. This is uh, this is the results I was getting with them, which is a. Uh, yeah, chalk and cheese compared to what I was getting in the beginning. So I'm really, really happy with that. It's really good with a project like this. It sort of gives you a chance to really experiment and push push your skills a bit. So yeah, you can see how the, the front three cylinders there have plenty of room, like nowhere near the engine mount. This is all the uh, AC power steering and everything. Um, I've just got the AC line there kicked back with a zip tie, so. So yeah, you can sort of see this aircon pipe coming out of the TX valve. And it sort of comes out this way and then it sweeps back towards the manifold. So what I'm gonna do in the end, once I sort of get the engine bay all sorted out, um, is I'm just gonna try and try and tweak this a little bit, just bend it over ever so slightly, just so it sweeps over here and then stays out and hugs the chassis. I actually wanna run that line along the top of the chassis rail with those other pipes. Um, and then yeah, that'll get it further away from the manifold make a heat shield up to come up off of the chassis itself. And then yeah, I'll make a heat shield to sort of sit in there between the chassis and the manifold just to protect everything. But um, yeah, that's the only that's the only part it gets sort of close to. But I mean, there's a there's a good inch between the manifold and the chassis once that air comp pipes out the way. So um, yeah, plenty of room. I reckon it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to end up getting the manifold ceramic coated. So yeah, heat's certainly not going to be a problem down there. So yeah, I'm going to leave this one here. No point rambling on for no reason. And um, yeah. 80% of people have stopped watching by now anyway, so once again, if you've made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate it. It actually means a lot that people take time out of their day to watch these videos. So um, yeah, thanks Eats, and I'll catch you on the next one.